As Ben mentioned, uh, Pinterest is about three and a half years old. And um, it wasn't actually until this past fall that we launched business accounts, which was really our first, uh, our first formal effort at um, making a place for businesses on Pinterest. Uh, that's when we launched our business site, the first rev of it. Uh, just a few months later, in March, uh, we launched these uh, Pinterest web analytics that Steve just talked through. Today, we're holding our first uh, partner <coughs> event, our first business-oriented event. Um, and we've heard a lot of really interesting things from a lot of businesses um, who are using Pinterest in really interesting ways. And um, hopefully, uh, as you've been sitting through the last couple of hours, uh, you've been able to see how some of the, the tools that we've made available, some of the best practices that the, the brands that have been, been here today that have shared uh, can apply to your business. And so, as Steve mentioned, we want to make it as easy as possible to just jump right in uh, and start implementing the ideas that today has hopefully kicked off in your minds. So we're announcing um, today just a couple of changes to the business site that will hopefully make it more of a one-stop shop for you uh, to accomplish that. So the first thing you want to do, for those of you whose businesses uh, don't have business accounts, uh, the first thing you want to do is go to business.pinterest.com, click the giant red button, you can't miss it, and, uh, and join as a, as a business so that you can verify your website and get access to analytics. We've also got a bunch of resources on there to reference. So for example, um, if you're sort of the, the maven in your organization around Pinterest and there are other people that you need to explain it to, there's resources there about how Pinterest works, pinning 101 resources and things like that. Uh, we have some success stories uh, on the website, including some that have been mentioned today. Those are our more formal case studies. We'll continue to build those out. We'll share them um, as quickly as we can. And, uh, and there will be many, many incredible uses of Pinterest that we won't be able to get into those case studies, uh, but we'll do our best. Uh, and then we've got the tools that you will find helpful in actually putting into action uh, some of these things for your business. So I'll talk through a couple of those now. The first, of course, is the pin it button. And you've heard a lot about that today. And that's, that's by design because uh, a great Pinterest strategy really starts with your own website. Uh, the best the best first thing to do is to make sure you've got that pin it button on your website. Uh, and so there's a resource on there where you can go, you can get the, the very short line of code that you can drop into your website and put the pin it button where it makes sense for your uh, web visitors. We've also added pages that will give you all of the resources that you need to share back to your respective organizations what the new products are that we've launched today and how you can implement them. So uh, if you uh, if you are ready to, uh, to implement rich pins, you can go to this website uh, that, uh, that was mentioned earlier and you can sign up. You can, it'll show you exactly what you need to do with your metadata so that you can implement rich pins and it'll click you right through to the, um, the validator where you can test to make sure that your pins are going to render correctly on Pinterest and you can tweak that. We're also launching a blog, um, a business blog. And the reason for that is because uh, as, as Steve's mentioned, we're a very small partner team at Pinterest, and uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm here. There's a lot of brands that are doing really interesting things on Pinterest, and uh, we want to be able to share out those learnings as quickly as possible. One of the roles that I see our team predominantly taking on is basically keeping tabs on all of the great things that a lot of you guys are doing and then sharing them out to the rest of you in real time so that we as a community of people who are trying to build out the interest graph in a way that makes your businesses more discoverable, because a lot of the things that people are looking for on Pinterest are the things that your businesses offer. And so uh, this blog will let us share out in real time some of the interesting uses that we're seeing for Pinterest, some of the interesting best practices that we're seeing in real time in a bit more uh, quick and, uh, and, and, and lower, um, lighter weight way than, than just the formal case studies. So look for best practices to come through here. Look for industry insights for your in industry as we continue to learn and see interesting things being applied uh, in the different verticals, ranging from retail to electronics to uh, many that we haven't talked about today specifically. And then um, the third thing that we will um, that we'll share here is, of course, product updates, just to make sure that as we continue to evolve the product, as we continue to evolve the platform, uh, you'll know that if you keep tabs on this blog, you're not going to miss anything. You'll be able to keep moving at the speed of your business to make sure that you are um, fully empowered to continue to innovate and come up with great ways that Pinterest can drive your business. 
Uh, I should mention there on the blog too, we'll also be, uh, be uh, starting some webinars soon. So uh, you can keep an eye out for that on our blog too. We'll announce those there and make those available soon. Uh, we'll also be sharing the content from, most of the content from this, uh, from this meeting there too. Uh, you've also all received this morning in your shopping bags a, uh, a Pinterest for Business Guide. This is our first stab at best practices. Uh, hopefully it's a little bit redundant because you've heard a lot of those best practices from uh, the brands that have been responsible for innovating those today. Uh, so I, I see this as very much and can't emphasize enough that this is a living, breathing document. It's going to change, it's going to evolve, and I think when we do a new, a new version of this some months from now, there will probably be things from the people in this room that will want to incorporate into that. So I'm really excited to see what you guys all come up with and how we can scale that out to the broader business audience uh, through that best practice guide. I'm gonna take a couple of minutes now just to walk through some of uh, what I think are the most important uh, and potentially less obvious of those best practices, which I, I think are just, uh, they were very insightful to me when I joined Pinterest and I can see how important they can be to businesses. Uh, so we'll talk through just a couple of those. Um, and this site is also going to be available on our business site. So if there are other folks in your organizations, agencies, if there are clients that you want to point this to, uh, point to this, you can just go uh, point them to business.pinterest.com. So one of the best practices that you'll see in that guide is uh, more granular uh, direction on how to use the pin it button on your website. And uh, one of the examples of a brand that has done this remarkably well um, is WikiHow. So WikiHow is a website where you can go and you can discover tons of tips on how to basically live your life. Everything from creating a temporary tattoo with a ma magic marker, to kicking a soccer ball, uh, to all kinds of home and DIY and how do you tie a tie and all of those things. So it's really interesting. And because it's so vast, because they have so many articles, it's really interesting on a very personal level. There are some things that I find interesting, uh, and people who share interests with me will also find those interesting. So if you can make it really easy for me to pin those back as a reference for later, for example, how do I tie a bow tie? I've tied a bow tie just a couple of times in my life, uh, but it was a total pain to figure out how to do it what I did. So that's really useful to be able to pin that someplace where I can reference it later. And other people who follow me or any of my boards might find that valuable too. So if, if you can figure out a way to make it as easy as possible, for the people who are consuming your content to pin that content back to Pinterest, it's going to help make your business much more discoverable and result in tons of referral traffic. In fact, uh, Pinterest is the highest referral traffic driver for WikiHow of all the social platforms, driving about four times as much referral traffic as Facebook. Uh, but on top of all of that referral traffic, which is great, there's the huge brand building opportunity as well. So when you think about making it possible for people to share individual pieces of content in a way that is very authentically relevant to them, in a way that reflects their interests and might uh, be interests that they share in common with lots and lots of other people, you can imagine how as that content gets discovered and repinned over and over and over, it ripples out across Pinterest and results in tons and tons of impressions which have huge branding value. So in fact, WikiHow, uh, sees three million impressions per day on Pinterest, which is pretty massive. Um, so that's the power of the pin it button. That's why we emphasize it so much here today, because that really is the foundational level to every great printer strategy. Now that isn't to say that there isn't room for custom content that's created specifically for Pinterest. And in fact, we've heard uh, some of that today from some of the partners that have spoken. Um, I, I see the pin as a creative canvas, much in the way that I see a blank page in a magazine as a creative canvas. I think the analogy there is very compelling. If you think of a magazine ad, or a print ad in general, uh, the creative challenge, the marketing challenge, is basically to take a message and distill it into something that is usually highly visual and can communicate in a simple image emotion, a compelling message, and drive attachment to the brand. Uh, so this is one of my favorite print ads from recent years. It's for Mercedes-Benz, and I think it perfectly captures what Mercedes, Mercedes is trying to communicate um, to its audience. It's this, uh, this coming together of the left brain and the right brain. It's a beautiful image. It's compelling. It's interesting. And of course, it's also very pinnable. 
Uh, and this, this image is actually all over Pinterest. I had uh, no trouble finding one of my favorite print ads on Pinterest. Um, so if, if you can figure out uh, what kind of images, what kind of uh, messages are resonating with your audience, and deliberately create content that is specifically intended to be shared in this ecosystem that either provides utility for people so they can reference it back when they want to go do these things in their real lives, or that align enough with people's interests that they collect them into these collections that we call boards, or if uh, they can be so self-expressive that people think, hey, this is something that I find very interesting and I'd like to actually share this out to the people who follow me because I think that they'll find it interesting too. You can tap into all of those human emotions that come into play when somebody is using Pinterest as a pinner. So speaking of the, uh, the potential for individual pins to uh, continue to ripple across Pinterest, this is one of the most pinned products from uh, Whole Foods, or the, one of the, the most repinned pins from Whole Foods. This is for spicy spaghetti squash with black beans. It's been repinned 68,000 times. So when we as marketers dream about people loving our product so much that they tell their friends about it and that many, many millions of people learn about what we're offering from people who are recommending it to them, this is the kind of scale that gets us really, really excited. Imagine how many impressions you could get if 68,000 people repinned your content. Uh, and this is where um, I just want to come back and build one more point on, on what Steve was talking about with, uh, as it relates to contests earlier. Contests can be a great part of your Pinterest strategy. Uh, the one thing that I would add to what Steve said um, that you should consider is the impact that that will have on repins. Because, of course, getting people to pin your content is step one. That's a drop in the water. But if other people repin it, it ripples and ripples and ripples out through more and more people. And it's more valuable to more people and it helps your business get more and more discoverable. So I've done some analysis into this and sometimes uh, a, a contest will get people incentivized enough that they feel compelled to pin something that maybe isn't perfectly aligned with their interest. Maybe it isn't authentic or true to how they're really using Pinterest in the day to day you might get that drop in the water. You might get a significant volume of pins. But you might not get those repins because Pinterest and the interest graph that we're trying to build um, is all about people sharing and pinning and discovering these interests that they have in common with other people. So just one more thing to bear in mind as you think about how the pins themselves represent your business on Pinterest. Another thing to consider here is, um, is the the different interplay between boards and the pins that comprise those boards. So boards are a great way to organize your content. They're a great way to structure your Pinterest strategy and help you figure out what kinds of things you should be pinning. Uh, and there is a tendency to think about them as a destination because especially those of us who have grown up in digital marketing, that's what we're used to doing. We're used to creating experiences that people come to. Uh, and I would just caution uh, not to overly emphasize the design of the boards themselves at the expense of how you think about how those pins are going to live as they're repinned individually. Think about that eggplant or that uh, spaghetti squash pin from, from Whole Foods. Uh, if they had really spent a lot of time to create this perfect, maybe creative, like stacked meal of all these, you know, it was all of the dishes and everything, and they intended it to be a, a um, sort of a destination that people experience on the board, that would represent a very, very, very small percentage of the people who experience that pin because the vast majority experience it through the repin. Um, so there's other interesting ways, I think, of leveraging Pinterest as a creative platform uh, beyond just customizing those boards to look creative and interesting. And one of those is to pin your product or your content alongside other inspirational content that helps to round out your story. So this is just an example that I pulled together. Let's say, for example, that I sell women's coats. I could just pin my coat, uh, the coat that I'm offering for sale. And that might be great because there are certainly people who are looking for winter coats of all fashion across Pinterest. But I could also make that a more inspirational story by, by pinning it alongside some inspirational winter scenes of the types of things that I could do if I could get out and enjoy winter and be warm. 
Um, so this is an example of that. You can imagine pinning a car, a product image of a car, or pinning a product image of a car where it's surrounded by, uh, by highway vistas and the things that you can do with that car. The people who follow you will experience that in, your, in, your, in their feed, uh, but most people will still experience these as individual pins. And so it's important to think about how those individual pins will carry on through Pinterest and through the repin cycle. So when you're thinking about what kind of content you're going to pin, one other uh, best practice that a lot of businesses have seen be very successful is to pin stuff not just from yourself uh, or your business, but to pin the types of things that inspire you. And I think this is a really, really important one because as you think about it, Pinterest is organized and the interest graph is organized in such a way as to try and make it as easy as possible to find people and boards that reflect your interests because then the people who are curating those boards are, uh, are they're out there trying to discover new things for them that simultaneously helps you discover the things that you love. And so it can not only help serve that utility and you provide value to people by sharing other things that inspire you, but it can really help to round out uh, the brand story and get beyond just the products. The products that you sell are the end game of your business, but there's so, your business stands for so much more. It has so much more history, so much more personality. And uh, this can be a compelling way of building that emotional connection with people and helping them see what your business stands for. So that's why we recommend that. One other thing that I think uh, differentiates Pinterest significantly from other digital platforms is the fact that uh, a pin on Pinterest can be discovered and rediscovered and pinned and repinned weeks and months and potentially even years after the initial pin. And this is very different from what much of digital focuses on today, which is very much, this is what I'm doing right now. This is my commentary on what's going on in the world right now. And then we, as, as marketers, try to get our content into that stream before it passes by and expires. So as you think about the kind of content that you're going to, Pinterest, uh, going to pin to Pinterest, just bear in mind that it's evergreen. Uh, it has a very long shelf life. Uh, you may not need to create as much content uh, because you may not need to have something uh, to say about every current event that's happening. Uh, and your content may continue if you really invest in it and make it uh, and, and leverage the insights and the analytics and really build it into the type of content that's going to be more, most useful to your audience, it can endure and continue to resurface over and over and continue to, re to ripple over and over. Um, and this is an example of some of the uh, interests that we see on Pinterest that are reflective of just how diverse the interest graph is. Uh, the interest that we all have are what make us make our personalities. And you can see here everything from fun colors to wear to hobbit safety videos to simple recipes. These are not time-specific interests. Certainly our own interests might evolve over time, uh, but people will always be interested in these things and always looking to discover more things uh, that they love. So we're also, um, of course, going to use Pinterest uh, as a partner marketing team uh, to stay in touch with you guys and to share out the things that we're seeing that are interesting. So we've set up a Pinterest account uh, for the partner team. It's pinterest.com slash business. Take a look at that, follow some of our boards, uh, and we'll look forward to sharing out news articles, pins that we love, best practices that we see in real time. And finally, yes, we're a small team, uh, but we're really, really excited to be working with you. We're really excited to have this opportunity to have some face-to-face -face time with you. Um, and we don't have as much opportunity as we, we would like to meet with as many of you as we would like, uh, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. We definitely do. Uh, so we've put a contact form up on business.pinterest.com, and we hope that you'll use that to stay in touch, to let us know what's working well for you. Let us know what suggestions you have. Let us know if you have ideas um, for how we can better partner uh, with businesses like yourselves. Uh, we probably aren't going to be able to respond to every email that we get through this, but we're going to do our best and, um, and really look forward to building out our relationship with all of you. So just to recap some of the resources that we've made available, and again, the objective of this is to empower you so that when you leave this room today, you can go back to your respective organizations and be prepared to take whatever ideas have come to you here and will come to you in the coming weeks and implement them um, on your own. Uh, and if you do have any questions, of course, you can let us know. Um, but recapping some of these, we have on our business site product summaries and setup tools, so you can get all those things implemented. 
We have the blog where we can keep in touch in more real time. We have the Pinterest for Business Guide, uh, which again is a living, breathing document, and I look forward to updating over time. Uh, we have our social channels beginning with our own Pinterest account, and we'll have those webinars kicking off soon. So hopefully you find these things helpful. Hopefully uh, this, is, um, this is going to kick off a lot of new great ideas for how to use Pinterest for business. And uh, like I said, this is a pretty young team. It's a pretty new team. It's a pretty small team. But we're really excited about the opportunity that we have to build something together with you all that will help people discover what they love and do those things in real life, many of those things having to do directly with the businesses that you have created and are involved in. Thank you.